Joining me now, Dan Primack is business editor at Axios, and Duncan Davidson is a partner at Bullpen Capital. And since we were just uh, talking uh, about um, SoftBank, Dave, uh, David, I want to start with you. You're not <laughs> all that impressed by what Masa Sun has been up to here or, or up to lately. Uh, Duncan, sorry. Um, but but do you think now that this is kind of out of the way, it kind of shows that the market, OK, we cleared this hurdle even for a, a listing that felt a little desperate? Well, I must say I'm amused to hear there's now a soft bank risk in a stock. That's a new <laughs> one. But after we work, I suppose it's sensible. This company, ARM, is to smartphones what Intel is to PCs. It should be a core holding of most portfolios in tech. And so I'm actually happy this thing is public. I don't think Moss is going to sell. I think he can leverage this position to do other things, which is probably what his real plan is. Uh, I will say this, though. This IPO is normal. It goes up 10 percent. Maybe we'll end the day 15, 18 percent up. That's a normal IPO. But it's not a big pop. So I think we're all waiting for next week. Insta, Instacart and um, I guess Kite, what is it, <laughs> the, the other one, uh, to go public um, to really see if this is the tech story now for VCs. Yeah, uh, very much, Dan, uh, kind of what you're saying. Instacart now becomes the next one to watch here. Yeah, and Cleveo also, which is the, the other one Duncan was referring to, which maybe is arguably more important. It's a name that fewer people know because it's not a consumer name. It's marketing SaaS, but matters because you've got so many other SaaS companies which are in the pipeline watching, a lot fewer grocery delivery mm -hmm. companies watching. You know, Leslie uh, Picker said something interesting. She talked about how, you know, the, the fact that it did this one arm didn't, you know, get have, face major headwinds was important. I think that's true. In other words, I don't think arm succeeding doing this normal IPO is really tailwinds for others. But if it was getting crushed, you know, if it was now trading, you know, down at 40 bucks a share or right. something, that would have freaked out Instacart and Clavea. Oh, for sure. And, and probably turned a lot of investors off and left everybody a little bit more cautious. All right. So it, it's Clavio, right? I, Clavio, every I'm time sorry. I Whatever yeah. it is, Clavio, Clavio, whatever, banana, banana. So now, Dan, that we kind of know that the market can digest this uh, mega IPO, Instacart's much smaller. Clavio, I'm not sure exactly what the size is that they're looking for. Maybe Birkenstocks is out there. But do you think that this entices the likes of Stripe and some others uh, to, to say maybe this is the window? I mean, it should. I mean, you've got a lot of companies. You know, I, I Databricks today, which is this privately held company, right. which touches on AI, raised a half a billion dollars today. And speaking to their CEO last night over and over saying, well, you know, why haven't you gone public? And he said, well, nobody's gone public. We're kind of, he didn't say we're scared of the market, but he wants to watch others. Well, here we go. Arm today, a couple next week, Birkenstock. You know, Birkenstock, kind of like Tava, isn't the same as an AI company or a chip company, but nonetheless, it reflects that investors are willing to buy new issues. And there's an importance. I, I You know, you can't wait too long when an IPO window is open. You can end up with a drought. and you, It can go on years, as we just saw. Duncan, I was thinking about the Instacart investors, you know, the private equity investors, the private uh, markets who gave it that $39 billion valuation a couple of years ago. And it's now worth nine billion. I mean, there's a lot of losses in Silicon Valley or, or amongst these private equity firms. I have to imagine, or venture capital firms. I'm sorry, I have to imagine for not just Instacart but maybe others whose bubbles have burst a little bit. Well, in general, though, the VCs got in much lower than a 39 billion valuation. So I think the VCs here are still in most of these stocks are still way above water, and they want to get liquidity. One of the problems in this era is it's taking so long to go public. You're sitting on these things well beyond what you would have done maybe 20, 25 years ago. So liquidity is good, even if it isn't a huge win. It's good to get out. You're right. But that said, I guess the question I'm asking is, are these kind of muted IPOs for the public markets, Duncan, actually better for the retail investor than, you know, a hype cycle or a valuation where I mean, they could the retail investor easily in 2021 could have been the IPO customer for Instacart if they had chosen that moment to go public. So it just it's almost like we've kind of turned the tide here where um, those taking losses in a muted IPO seem to be some of the later stage private investors and not so much uh, the public. Well, look, it's no question that delaying IPOs and having them sell at bubble valuations is not good for the retail investor. They used to get in much earlier and make a killing on these stocks, and now they're getting in way too late. So this downturn in the valuations is great for the retail investor. And I think some of these stocks will show some of the pop we've all wished to see in tech stocks. My only caution is this. 
no matter what Masa says, ARM is not an AI story. <laughs> and most of the companies coming out that we see in the list that are soon to go IPO are not AI stories. It may be we don't really see the hot market again until some of the AI stocks, uh, which are, you know, brewing, uh, get to go public. And I think the, the retail investor will hop on those like they're hopping on or we're hopping on NVIDIA.